Jesus came and he was the son of God. He came as God's ambassador or missionary to a lost people and he came and he said, I've come not to be served, which I could demand of you if I wanted it, but I'm not, not, not that kind of king. I've come not to be served, but to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. So we see in the person of Jesus, this family member of the Trinity coming as a missionary to serve all humanity. And then he goes to the cross, dies for our sins, goes into the grave, conquers death for all of time, rises again in the power of the Spirit on the third day, and his disciples are broken, and they're scared, and they're freaked out, and they're, they've huddled in this little basement, uh, uh, you know, hideaway, where they've got the boxes of ammo, and the, and the beans, and the flour stored up, and, you know, how are we going to figure this out? And he, and he walks through the wall, which is crazy, and, and the first thing the risen Lord says to his disciples is, my peace be with you, which is so they wouldn't wet their pants, my, my peace be with you, just as the Father sent me, so send I you. And the text says, and he breathed upon them his Holy Spirit. We tracking with this? And then he leaves, okay? He leaves the planet. He ascends back to the Father and he sends his Holy Spirit so that his spirit, the spirit of Jesus, might fill his people and they might now embody the person, the work, the message, and the mission of Jesus to the world. Give you a story. Put some flesh on this reality. I was having lunch with a good friend of mine, a, a close, dear friend who's not a believer. He's a strong agnostic. He's been so since he was young. He wrote a 120-page paper on why God doesn't exist when he was 19. And we're good friends, and we're in relationship and in community together, and we're asking questions, and we're growing together. And I've shared the story before, and, and, and uh, we were having lunch a few months ago at the walkabout, and, and he said... Um, he said, uh, you know, I got all these questions about Christianity and no one's ever been willing to answer them before. You're the first guy that has been okay with me asking questions and not like, you know, yell at me because I'm questioning like orthodoxy. I'm like, dude, I don't got any problems. Jesus is very, you know, secure in who he is. Your doubt he isn't there, like doesn't make him wonder if he's still there or not. <laughs> he's totally okay with who he is. So, so you're one of the questions, he's got answers, let's talk. So, so he's going all through all his questions, and one of the questions he asked was, was one, one of the things I don't understand is, why didn't he just stay? Why did he leave? Like, if he was God, and he, and he could do whatever he wanted, why didn't he just stay, live forever on earth, and go around, do a speaking tour, and book signing things like this, you know, and, and get us, you know, his time on Oprah, and, and, and so then, like, I would know He's real because, like, no dude can live that long. And he, he said, if he walked in this restaurant, and this is hardcore, a, a, you know, agnostic guy, wells up with tears. If he walked in this restaurant and looked me in the face and said, I'm here, I'd fall on my knees and worship him. Why didn't he stay? So I could ask him these questions. Well, I know the answer to that. And I'm sitting there going, man, if I, if I, if I, if I lay this on him, like, you're going to think I'm a fruitcake. But I'm like, hey, I mean, you know, I'm okay being a fruitcake. <laughs> I mean, most people think I am anyway, so why not just open my mouth and confirm it for him, right? And so I felt the Spirit very clearly say, like, don't miss it. In other words, like, don't wimp out and don't think you got a better answer than the truth, so give it to him straight. I, 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 said, I said, here's the deal, bro. I go, I go, if Jesus had stayed, it wouldn't be as good as you think. One, it's a false premise to think that if you met him face to face, you'd follow him and worship him because lots of people saw Jesus face to face and they walked away. Thousands, in fact, constantly. Very, very few actually stayed. So it's a false premise to think that if you actually saw him, you believe in him. Secondly, I said, even if he had stayed, it wouldn't be a very effective evangelistic plan. You know why? Because he'd be stuck in the Middle East somewhere. And to see him, you'd have to fly over there. What are the chances of you doing that? Find enough money, dump time off work, kids, fly over there. Then you fly over there. You think you'd actually get a chance to talk to them? I mean, the line would wrap around the corner and down the street and over the, over the, around half the globe, and you'd have to get in line, and you come in, and pe people in front of you and people behind you, and they're tired, and they're hot, and they're cranky, and you'd get, what, 60 seconds with him? Two minutes tops, line pushing. Hey, I got eye questions too. Hey, come on, come on, come on. Would it convince you to talk with him for 60 seconds? Would it? 
What if he came on and speaking to her? Came through with Nancy. Did a book sign down at Starbucks. Think you'd have time to talk with him? Think you'd even go? Yeah, probably not the most effective way to go about it. Here's why I left, friend. He left so that he could send his spirit, like literally the essence of who he is and his power to indwell his people, the church, that they might scatter and fill the earth with his presence so that as he fills his people with himself, lost people are encountering the spirit of Christ or the person of Christ every day. So to answer your question, my friend, I said, Jesus is actually here right now, having lunch with you right now, talking to you about himself right now through his spirit in me. He's halfway to with a fork like this. He goes, <laughs> okay, I got it, I got it. That's the church. The church is the body of Christ, filled with his spirit, sent to embody the person, the work of Jesus, to the earth.